Hello there, and welcome to this video on conversations on consciousness. My name's Ladron, and I was just thinking just now, I just put this top on, and it started reminding me of the army. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to speak to you about how are we living our past life in this life? Is that possible? And I believe so. I mean, I've had two past lives, two now that I'm aware of where I was in like uh, in in the army in like the war the first or second one um, first or second world war was me as a Spitfire pilot and I was in Chicago in America and how I know this is from just a feeling like an attraction to 1960s music to not sorry 19 I think 40s, 50s, I can't remember the, the era, not, probably not 60s, before then, 1940s and 50s music, and being attracted to, to, um, to, to old war planes. And I've always loved wearing army boots. I've always worn like army boots and combat trousers. I'm even wearing them now. And I just feel comfortable. They're, they're very um, useful as well. And there's something just comforting about it. <laughs> So um, I'll tell you about an experience I had when I was very young and um, I can't remember how old, how old I was, five or six years old, and my brother had got these um, model airplanes and two of them were like Spitfires, uh, Spitfire planes. And I instantly noticed them straight away. I was so young, I didn't even, I shouldn't even know what they were. And my brother got them for Christmas um, I, I instantly said to him, that's a Spitfire. And he looked and he's like, how do you know that? And I couldn't even properly read at this age. And I was like, it's a Spitfire, it's a Spitfire. <laughs> and looking back, I'm like, well, of course I knew because I was around that time in this world where I was, you know, I had a different lifetime. And of course I will remember, I mean, I was flying the things, you know. <laughs> um, I've always been good at wood, wood making and wood carving. And what I've discovered is that what I thought was, when I, the last, one of my last past lives I remember dying was I was in this green room, listening to the wireless and in my, in my chair. And then I had a reading, um, was in in trance not myself in trance but a physical medium uh, michael shane and um i asked them can you tell me about the past life i remember when i died and i was in a green room and they said that wasn't a green room you're outside on your porch looking over the fields and the green outside and you're listening to the radio in in the rocking chair that you made and i was like oh that makes sense totally so I've always been good at making things. Um, I've built a few outhouses, extensions, helped build like the retreat center here in Somerset in England and just have a natural knack and an understanding of how to build things out of wood. And, you know, I started making furniture about 10 years ago, uh, making wood like uh, bookcases and uh, desks um, bedside cabinets and I, I think I did a quite a good job at it um, different different style um, very solid good really good solid wood and I just knew what to do I knew how to fill in the holes got you know glue and even doing other things I had builders come and see my work and they commented and said wow like do you know that's called this and I was like no how, how do you know how to do that I was like I don't know I just did it <laughs> so either I was tuning into the knowledge in the the Akashic records, where all knowledge is supposed to be, you know, contained. It's like the etheric internet or like Google, I guess. Um, either that, or I just seem to remember from a past life of doing that. Um, and another past life was supposed to be me in Vietnam, and I died very young. And this was a time when there was lots of. Um, tents and I like an army camp and when I was very young um, I was about I don't know again five six seven years old 
And all I wanted to do was to set up a tent in the garden and sleep in it. And I made it with like two, um, two chairs, two garden chairs, plastic chairs with like, with blankets. And it wasn't very waterproof, obviously. Um, but I, I said to my parents at the time, I said, hey, I'm gonna sleep in the garden tonight. And they didn't believe me and I did it. And they said, you can't sleep here. I was like, but I wanna sleep outside in the garden. And like, it just seems something so natural to me. And then after many years, I started researching about bushcraft, etc. So I believe that one of my past lives there was in Vietnam. And, you know, I'd always been interested in Chinese. I, I did lots of martial arts. And so it's like, what, you know, are we living our, our life now? Or are we living parts of our past lives into this life, which makes us more different? And I believe so. I did seven different martial arts a week. Um, when I was much younger because I felt very drawn to it. I felt happy. I, I was very fit, very physically fit. I did kickboxing, taekwondo, kung fu, karate, kapura, ninjutsu and jujitsu. I did all these different things in the space of a couple of years. I never graded because it was very expensive each time. So I never got further than like white belt <laughs> in all of them. I think I only graded once or twice and got to like orange belt in karate or, or taekwondo I think it was really enjoyed it, it was really fun, but I was always drawn to Chinese um, Chinese stuff and Japanese, so although these are our signs here, this is actually Japanese for uh, Reiki, the, the healing modality, and I felt really drawn to um, parts of Asia. I wanted to learn the language and, and speak it, but I found it so hard because a little bit of like dyslexia and stuff, and I found even trying to speak Chinese or Japanese was just so difficult for me. Um, however, I kept up the lineage of following like Bruce Lee and martial arts and studying and keeping fit and, you know, learning a lot about like, you know, Eastern sort of uh, herbalism, etc. And I believe these things are parts of, you know, many past lives or things that I've already experienced and are, are natural or second nature to me. And perhaps this is how we can recognize old souls or recycled souls, you know. I'm not old, I'm just recycled. Um, you know, how we can notice some people who are, you know, just really old souls that know how to do things. And maybe I'm, I'm that because I seem to put my mind to anything and able to do anything um, with focus. There are some things like maths which I'm not good at all, not very successful. Um, it's just a downfall of mine. However, many other things in life I'm able to do, building, cooking, and some things just come second nature to me. I think once you know the basics, then other things connect others, you know? So even mixing concrete can be the same as making a porridge. <laughs> Putting together, you're gonna make rock cakes, I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I believe so much that, you know, our current lives we are living parts of our past lives because they're part of us. You know, there is a spirit, there is a soul. You know, it's like the soul which lives on forever. It doesn't get recycled or bits taken part of it. But you have the, 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 the spirit and the soul and the soul goes on for many lifetimes going through different, different bodies. But it's the spirit of that person, the personality, um, which when you go and incarnate, I believe that spirit, that, that memory, some of it gets taken away and then that's that soul soul essence that soul body grows and expands and continues its many different lifetimes with knowledge and experience and growing and wisdom um so i think that's very important that we do that you know because if we were to if our spirit was always with us of our past memories we would probably be a mess mentally you know with mental problems, I don't know, um, bipolar and depression and all these other mental problems because we remember so much. We're, we're, we would remember so much pain, happiness, people that we've missed. You know, imagine living this life and like, okay, well, I remember having, you know, a lover in like China and like now I'm here in England in this past life and I miss them, you know, and you, you would miss. So does that, obviously that gets taken away from us, but not completely. We have remnant, remnants or 
uh, some debris, not debris is a bad word to, to describe that, but we have leftover residual energy, that's the right word, residual energy of our past lives with us, always, because they are with us, it is a part of us. And that's something that's very beautiful, that we just, we take on more of parts of the world and part of our experience, but we don't hold on to the, the bad stuff or the memories or the things that we miss, because otherwise how can we become present in this moment, in this life? And unfortunately, it's our upbringing, you know, the first seven years of our life is very important. And, you know, that's what shapes us. That's what creates us mentally, physically, um, and the way we can concentrate on things. It's, but yeah, you know, I, I totally believe that our past lives have a big importance of our current life now. Like, they affect us. And they're part of us. and Because it was us, we're just a different person now, but the same personality in a way, you know. We've just changed, we're just matured. Um, and some of us find it easier, some of us don't. And this goes why some people are scared of different things than others. Um, some people are scared of spiders, others are not. Um, some people are scared of heights, others are not. Some people are scared of being closed in, a, in you know, in, in confined spaces, um, others are not. It's, we all have these different th fears and it's like, why? Why does that affect us? You know, if we don't have, it's like, how can we be scared of something we've never had in our lives before? So, yeah, you know, claustrophobia, you know, people trapped in small, um, small confined spaces. I remember, you know, I had an experience when I was younger and like, you know, I remember an uncle actually, as a joke, throwing me in a big freezer when I was tiny. I could fit in there and close the, the freezer as a joke, you know, but I was crying. But I'm okay in confined spaces, um, whereas other people probably wouldn't even have that experience and yet have some phobia of being in confined spaces, you know, claustrophobia, and it's like the only thing to ration that and to understand is, that, okay, maybe they're just scared, but however, maybe it comes from a past life, and our desires are, our desires are personality, the things that we love to do, I believe don't just come from this life, but come from our past, in the past, experiences that we've had in this physical reality or beyond that you know we understand life differently um you know that the things that we love and we hate and we do um it all comes from the past totally it's like otherwise where does it come from and there's also been many countless of experiences from young children who've come into this world and they they can talk and they start speaking about their past life. Um, the Twin Towers, 9-11 event, there are some children that, you know, in this current time, actually remember the building number that they're on, the floor number, and what they were doing for work, and it's like, why did they remember that? Because it was so traumatic that they remember the experience so much that they are back here. There was a famous, um, quite a well-known story of a young boy, I think in Ireland, and he wasn't born in Ireland, he was born somewhere in the UK and kept talking about his old his old family and wanted to go visit there, so they did. And he went to see the old house that he was at when he was younger because children are very close to, you know, the spirit world. They have not long come back compared to, you know, someone who's 40 or 50 years old. They have more of a fresher memory. And so we have to almost relearn things again in this life we have to relearn about how to do things, how to behave, how to be a certain person. So, and that's that's how life is. It's it is what it is, unfortunately. So, I hope this has made any sense whatsoever to you, some way. Um, maybe it's got you to realise some parts of your life and things that you love. For me, it's been army and wearing um, army boots and combat trousers and you know, being very strict with timing and keeping clean and regiment and yeah, still like buying army stuff now, it's good quality as well. <laughs> but hey, that's me, you know, I, I haven't been in the army since, um, probably won't do, I've been there, done that. <laughs> 
So anyway, hope you enjoy my video. Um, yeah, leave some comments below if you remember any parts of your past lives. And yeah, I'd love to hear from you soon. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.